<laughs> oh, good boys, just, just flip us over. Oh, good, just flip us over. V8 Superboats is one of those sports where you probably need to be on the edge of madness. Imagine being strapped into an aluminium projectile that is capable of accelerating on water faster than a Formula One car. With a fire-breathing 1600 horsepower V8 engine tuned to within milliseconds of detonation sitting just behind your shoulder. Now imagine sitting next to someone who your own sense of self-preservation says might just be on the edge of sanity and hope they don't invert the boat in three feet of water whilst you're still strapped in. If that isn't enough, imagine the whole package, which weighs around 650 kilograms, has no brakes and no way of steering once the boat is out of the water, and that happens more often than you think. Designed around the New Zealand concept of jet boats first introduced back in the 1950s, the premise for a jet boat is that it is powered through a directional jet unit drawing water through a grill under the boat. That water is then forced through twin impellers out the back at a rate that would empty an Olympic sized swimming pool in just minutes, the jet unit also steering the boat. It is that drive system that gives the sport its name and allows the boats to be able to change direction at up to 6 Gs in very shallow water. The trick being that the driver actually has to attack corners, they can't let off the gas. When that happens, the results can be dramatic. In Australia, the sport has been operating for more than 20 years and this year it will host the biannual UIM World Series. To prepare for the end of season battle representing their country, the Australian teams contest a six round season in the international classes of Unlimited Superboat and International Group A, for the honour of a coveted number one plate and a chance to represent the green and gold in the World Series. Unlimited Superboats is just that, unlimited, almost anything goes, the only real exception being nitrous injection but these things are brutal regardless. Predominantly Chevrolet power plants, V8 Superboats has been on the cutting edge of engine development with some of the naturally aspirated alloy V8s pushing 570 cubic inches and above 1,000 horsepower. Superchargers for the most part have been made all but redundant by the lighter twin turbo engines, allowing immense power to be generated by smaller cubic inches. But you still find the odd big block competing and on their day, they can be just as quick. Budgets are like the engines in some cases, unlimited. This is a serious class for the serious competitor. Competition occurs on purpose-built circuits where channels run between a sequence of low islands with drivers having to negotiate the predetermined course, often with 25 to 30 intersections, with the assistance of their navigator in the correct rotation. Get it wrong and elimination can be immediate. Across each round, teams compete in four to five qualification events. Top 12 fastest time scorers graduate then to the first final. The rest, well, they have an early flight home. The first elimination final cuts each field down to six teams, the second final classifying the top three. The victor of that final rotation is then crowned the winner of the event. Championship points accumulate across every round, with the top point scorer, under a drop round system, at the end of the season declared the Australian champion. For the last five seasons, the elite class of competition, Unlimited Superboat, has been dominated by Victoria's Fonzie Mullen. An engine developer by trade, Mullen operates one of the biggest aftermarket performance centres in Australia, with all the tools at hand and the budget to create some of the most powerful LS engines in the world. I build my own engines, own development and everything else and something I thrive on. I don't pay someone to go and do it, I build these engine combinations myself. I design them and develop them. Uh, one's the 527 that we made and the 583. So on a world stage we've done some engineering feats that um, haven't been done uh, around and, and that's what we like to do. 
Mullen, though, hasn't had it all his own way over the last two years. Fellow Victorian Tremaine Dukes, New South Welshman Scott Krause and expat New Zealander Daryl Hutton have all figured strongly in the unlimited class, keeping the fans spellbound as they push the limits of man and machine. Whilst Mullen has been the most successful driver in V8 Superboat's history, the last two seasons have seen the six-time champion under attack. His 2017 title win, aided by the point scoring system which rewards consistency, handed him his fifth consecutive unlimited title despite winning just two of the seven rounds. In contrast, his season-long rival Tremaine Dukes claimed four wins but fell three points short of the title, a result which still stings for the fan favourite. The last round at Cabarita, Ponzi left nothing on the track, neither did I. That was our big show. He didn't have boat problems, I didn't have boat problems. It was game day. We took it at the end of the day. Yes, it was very, very close, but you know what? We won it. I'm not one to sit back and say, I can do this and I can do that. Well, you know what? You're only as good as your last lap. There's little love lost at the top of the championship points table. Mullen's success, like that of any champion of their sport, has come at a cost. And it has also made him a target, both in Australia and internationally. I'll be honest with you, I'm sitting duck and I'm six time Australian champion and everyone's out to get me, whether it's, uh, you know, trying to hassle me or do anything they can to put me off my game. Mate, we've had it. We're here, I'll withstand it. I've won six championships, you ain't going to get rid of me that quick. No matter what you're going to try, I'm going to be coming around the corner and I'm going to be coming after you. So if you think you've got the next engine planned, I've got two ahead of you. And don't worry about it. And that's how it's going to work and that's how it's going to stay. Everyone's beatable. I don't care who you are. You got what, 32 to 40 intersections going at speeds of up to 120, 125 kilometres an hour, six Gs in a corner, eight cylinders behind you, a jet unit that's always got gremlins in it. There is so many things that can go wrong, right? And if you think you're invincible, good on you, because I'll tell you what, every time I go out there, yeah, we're fast, but I know we're only ever a couple of inches off tragedy. For Dukes, his 2018 championship fell apart after the close of the 2017 season. Personal business commitments forcing the difficult decision to sell his much-loved boat, leaving the popular unlimited driver to watch the 2018 season unfold from the bank. Financially, two years ago, I made a business decision that wasn't very smart and I've been paying for it ever since. Um, my out was to come racing. It's very expensive, I understand that, and it definitely didn't help me on the other side, but and if you're not a racer, don't try and understand it, because you won't. I've got my family now and I've got my kids. Um, before that, I would put fuel in the boat before I put food in my mouth. Okay, because it's just, that's what we do. We push the boundaries. I push the boundaries on the track, I push the boundaries off the track. Some pay off, some don't. Unfortunately, in the last 12 months, neither have paid off. I'm driven by my friends who are at the track. Uh, there's not a tent here that I cannot go over and have a talk to somebody, have a chat. It's great, it's an awesome network. It's almost a melting pot and everyone just meshes in together. Some don't, that's by their own choices. But you know what, there's a great group of people here. They'll go to the ends of the earth to help you as well. So that's why I'm here. When I'm in that boat last year, I felt like I had a hundred people sitting on my shoulders riding along with me. It was unbelievable, the amount of support that I got. I had the backing of the crowd, I had the backing of everybody at the races, it was unbelievable. And the competitiveness is just second to none. TJ showed us last year, you know, pretty much every race they went back to back on, TJ won, but a couple of rounds that he didn't complete let him down on the overall championship. He showed that Fonzie was definitely catchable and beatable, wasn't very much in it, so it was really, really neat racing, you know, it was really racing that the crowd just stayed intense watching to right to the end because it was going to come down to like a hundredth of a second. Whilst Jukes has been unable to reignite his incredible 2017 season-long battle with Muller, the six-time champion had a new challenge on his hands in 2018, with emerging star Scott Krause taking on a new hull and engine package, a package originally designed around Australia's own two-time world champion, Slade Stanley. To have this new boat, I've been waiting 18 months for it, and it's all come around, ready for the start of the season, which we only got it two weeks before Griffith. Tuned at around 11 to 1,200 horsepower, so we can soon wind that up with a bit more boost. But 47% throttle we're using at the moment, so there's no need to push the engine too hard. 
Whilst Krauss stepped in to fill the vacancy left by Dukes, he wasn't the only driver who would step up to be a contender in 2018, with two-time Australian champion Daryl Hutton, widely regarded as one of the best drivers in the sport, finally finding some pace in a new boat and engine package that has taken more than two years to develop, a scenario which at times has left the expat New Zealand questioning his sanity. We went ahead as a, as a team and built this, brought this new boat to give us a year or two years up our sleeve for the World Series. Everybody's passion is to be able to become the world champion in the sport you know, it's what, what you drive for. So we did that and we just went backwards, you know, the, last, the actual last time we ran our last boat, we were within half a second of Fonzie. And, uh, and he's gone on to win the you know five in a row. So the man can drive and the man's fast. And so he's our benchmark at the moment. So we were <laughs> half a second from him. We went to this new hull and we went backwards eight seconds. Despite Mullen's domination of the championship and Krauss debuting an untried and untested package, the season began with the reigning champion fighting to overcome a late addition to the Ramjet fleet. A new boat and engine combination which wasn't able to deliver the start to the season he was looking for, and at Krauss' victory first time out, although Mother Nature did her bit to contribute to the result. We had a fuel tank issue, uh, so we only just got a new boat going. It's common knowledge we had to uh, get a second hand boat going in a matter of a few weeks. Didn't even test it, uh, we had a fuel leak in the tank. We still ran a 39 second uh, lap, only a second behind, and on the data, mate, we were miles in front of that. From there, the field returned to the new Keith venue in South Australia for the second time. The new purpose-built facility delivering another challenge to the reigning champion and yet another victory to Krauss, giving him a strong championship lead heading into his home event in Tamora. He was under no illusions about who he was going to have to beat for the title. Fonzie, he's, he's the man to beat. He's smooth, he's, he's calm, yeah. He's got, he's got the money and the power behind him, so he's the man to beat. He's beatable. We've proven that. He's in a really good boat, he's got a, um, a really good engine package with a far faster twin turbo. Uh, he's got his own track here, he's won the first two rounds which is fantastic. The first round was quite short so um, you know it's not a true respective of where he is. Under lights at Tamora, Krauss was again the benchmark in front of his home crowd, battling Mullen and former national champions Ted and Derek Segidis. In the second final, Krauss stormed around for one of his best runs of the night. Behind him though, Mullen suffered a setback in his session to fall behind the Segidis brothers and miss the final. Sadly, a technical issue with the official timing saw the result disputed post-round, but there was no denying the winner for the third time in season 2018. I was having a ball, it was just all about having fun and yeah, absolutely stoked. Rachel here, yep, get me through it, so, and all the pit crew. All the family, yeah, can't believe it. At the midpoint of the Penrite series, Krauss held a comfortable lead in the unlimited class. But one thing experience will tell you is that you're only as good as your last run. Heading to the popular Cabarita venue on the north coast of New South Wales, Mullen knew he needed a strong result, and despite a tough challenge from New Zealand race winner Rob Colley and his impressive twin turbo Nissan powered unlimited machine, Mullen was able to prevail in the final, Krauss hanging on for third, the three drivers separated by just half a second. With Mullen closing in on an historic sixth consecutive title, Krauss knew he needed to consolidate his lead at Cabarita second time around. The testing rotation though and mounting pressure from his rivals had a dire effect on his weekend popular country mechanic clearly ill at ease behind the wheel. Having faced a similar opportunity in the past, Mullen was cool under fire. But very quickly, he too found himself in trouble. A mechanical failure during Saturday's qualifying, leaving him with a very real prospect his championship campaign was over. That's not what we want to see. Both teams went into Saturday night searching for answers. Mullen employing the services of one of Brisbane's leading workshops to effect repairs to his unique twin turbo LS power plant, the work continuing long into the night. 
By Sunday morning, the two teams were back at the circuit and ready for action, although it was clear pretty quickly that very little had changed. For Mullen, he and the team took a deep inward breath as Ramjet hit the water for its first run of the day, but very quickly the team realised that their problems had multiplied and they had another issue on their hands. Whilst the points leaders were struggling to record a lap, former champion Daryl Hutton was on a resurgence, the two-time champion having finally discovered the sweet spot in the American automotive stinger. And he was very quickly mounting pressure on the top of the leaderboard. When we left here two months ago, we'd actually split the jet block out of the hull. We had to tech screw it to try and survive the day. And at the end of the day, we broke a blowabout so we didn't get to carry on from the 12. But yeah, it's been upside down. It's been fully welded, bog, front and rear trying a whole lot of different series of things, trying to extend the delta forward because it is a very, very short boat. We've extended the back backwards and trying to move the delta forward and move the engine back and roll cage back and it's, it's just been an absolute nightmare really. Hutton though wasn't the only driver pushing the points leaders. Fan favourite Glenn Roberts, one of the most popular drivers in the sport, was also enjoying his best run of the year. With the clock ticking, Mullen was faced with his first likely retirement of the year, a throttle body failure prompting calls out to the fans on the hill and on social media to find a replacement. With one source more than an hour away and just one final chance to record a time to qualify for the finals, Mullen's team pushed the reigning champion off the trailer to complete a run at not much better than walking speed. With a number of early retirements in the opening day, Mullen knew that provided he completed a lap and set a time, he would qualify for the finals. But new throttle body had arrived, leaving the team ready for their first final. The crew and the fans taking a collective inward breath as Mullen left the pit pool to approach the starter. Taxed by the events of the previous 24 hours, Mullen proved that he too was human, making a rare navigational error in the first elimination final, leaving him to watch the rest of his rivals nervously as he held on for a place in the top six. As each run ended, Mullen slipped further and further down the leaderboard to sit on the bubble with one boat still to come, Scott Kraus. The crowd held their breath again, understanding that this could be the turning point of the 2018 season. A winning run could end Mullen's stranglehold on the Australian Championship and put Kraus in a winning position. Sadly for Scott Kraus, it was all over before it had begun. That was all the momentum Mullen needed, the reigning champion following up in the second final to set the fastest time of the weekend before improving it again in the final. Team Ramjet, up till three o'clock this morning rebuilding this engine. Are we wrapped? With one round remaining, Mullen had returned to the top of the point standings, but under the Australian competition rules, teams are allowed to drop their worst point scoring round of the year. So that put Kraus back on top with a margin of just three points. It was all going to come down to the final round, a round which would take place in Scott Krause's backyard at a venue where he was the outright winner earlier in the year, with the added support of a home crowd. From the outset, it was clear that both drivers were intent on victory. As he had done for much of the season, Krause set a blistering pace from the opening qualifying session, leaving all in his wake. But as he had done over many prior seasons, Mullen kept his best until it mattered, ending qualifying almost a second clear of his rival. The setback in the first elimination final for Mullen saw him drop to second, but by the top six he was back on top, which is 15 one hundredths of a second faster than Kraus with just one run remaining. A win for Kraus would put the title out of reach for Mullen, but should Mullen win and Kraus play second, the two drivers would share the championship trophy. Heading into the final, they knew the equation, but there was still one more twist to come. Daryl Nutty Hutton. Liking nothing more than to throw himself into the mix to shake up the established order, the expat New Zealander wanted to prove a point in the final run for his supercharged power plant, throwing caution to the wind for his fastest time of the night.
Hutton improving by more than a second and a half to break into the 40s for the first time all night, both Krauss and Mullen knew they would have to give it everything they had. It had all come down to the final run of the season. Krauss was first out, with Mullen following suit soon after, with both drivers delivering a flawless performance. There can only ever be one. Mullen would take his third win of the year to move to the points lead, but Krauss was just four tenths slower and vitally almost a second faster than Hutton, giving the sport an historic first, a tied championship. Yeah, we were uh, on the pace, but uh, pumped out uh, massive amounts of oil. So uh, we were in trouble for the top three, and um, yeah, basically we had a, a little bit of pressure on us from uh, some other competitors. So uh, in true Ramjet style, we just uh, whacked some more boost in it, took some fuel out and said, well, it's going to last, it's going to last, and we're going to be on the uh, top step of the podium. We've come in with a, a brand new boat, first time I drove it this year. We've got it two weeks before Griffith. Um, we've done a fair bit of work on it, but we've, we've sort of, we've got no data and, and we've got no blades and one nozzle and we've just persevered with it. And I've just been learning to drive it as hard as I can without spinning the wheels and it's been an experience. So an historic moment for V8 Superboats with its first tied championship in 24 years. A fitting end perhaps to what had been an epic battle between an established champion and a new contender. For the Australian teams, the Penrite series provided a tantalising taste of what is to come. The first World Series showdown since 2009 in Australia between New Zealand, the USA and Australia is scheduled for late 2018 an event which will see some of the biggest names in the sport come out of retirement to go after the coveted title of world number one. <laughs>